This is the Washington Week Webcast Extra. Hello, I'm Gwen Eiffel, and I'm joined around the table by Dan Baltz of the Washington Post, Jeff Zeleny of CNN, Joan Piscupic of Reuters, and David Sanger of the New York Times. As you can see, we, were just, we just kept talking. <laughs> While the rest of us were struggling with the politics of politics, of which more in a moment, 50 world leaders gathered in Washington to consider more weighty things like climate change and nuclear weapons control. So was the president able to mark this week, this mini summit off as a success, David? Gwen, this was more a bookend than a success. What I think these nuclear summits have done is focused the attention of national leaders on the fact that there's a vast amount of loose nuclear material out there, that it wouldn't take terrorists very much ingenuity or work to grab a hold of and make a dirty bomb. Mm. And the most interesting thing that happened this afternoon was a scenario based on a film that they wouldn't let us see, interestingly, about a dirty bomb incident in a crowded city like Brussels, like Paris. And then they went around to the leaders talking about how they would respond to it. And they kept all of that off of the screens as we were, as we were watching it. That's the big fear. So the question is, after the four summits we've been through, how much success has President Obama had in getting rid of this material? And the answer is, he's locked down some of the most vulnerable. He's pulled some of it out of places where it shouldn't have been. The Ukraine, they got all the highly enriched uranium out before Ukraine erupted. That's a big win a few years ago. But if you look at it as a proportion of all the loose nuclear material out there, he hasn't made a whole lot of progress. Mm. Okay, let's talk, go back to politics for a moment. Um, Dan, um, we've now been watching all of these primaries. As, as Jeff mentioned in the regular show, we thought maybe we'd be done by now in March. We're not. <laughs> so take us ahead. What comes next? Well, Wisconsin's Tuesday. It's a standalone uh, contest on both sides. Um, and it will have an impact, as we talked about in the main show. Then you've got two weeks until you get New York. Um, and New York hasn't had a big Democratic contest since 92 or 88. Republicans aren't used to New York primaries in any way, shape, or form. Both of these primaries are going to be important. Uh, if Donald Trump loses in Wisconsin, he's going to need to bounce back in New York. The polls at this point show him with a whopping lead, but he's had, as we said, he's had some trouble recently. Um, then after, um, after New York, <clears throat> you've got a round of primaries on the 26th of April um, that includes Pennsylvania and Connecticut and some others. Um, on the Republican side, the reality is we are not going to know until June 7th, the last day of the primaries, when California uh, is When's the, the last time that happened? <clears throat> well... I don't remember the last time that we were waiting on California. The, I, can, I can go back to 1984. Wow, really? Uh, when Walter Mondale had to win either California or New Jersey hmm. uh, in order to more or less clinch it. And he Easy. lost California to Gary Hart, but he won, won New Jersey, and that was basically enough. But, wow. uh, but who, Donald Trump is going to need California if he hopes to get to 1237 or close to that before the convention and uh, you know so we we've got a long way to go we do well let's talk about delegates on the other side because we spent a lot of time counting up the delegates for donald trump on the republican side but there's some delegate questions on the democratic side too jeff there are and the way the democratic rules are it's not winner take all anywhere so regardless of uh of how this goes the clinton campaign and the sanders campaign will split them going ahead and you know the new york uh um, primary on April 19th, I believe there are 247 delegates on the Democratic side. You know, a big win on either side would, would help either one of them. But the th thing that's looming out there potentially that is uh, causing some party officials some um, heartburn potentially is, you know, pledge delegates versus superdelegates. And the superdelegates are party officials and elected leaders who, you know, are members of the establishment in most cases who also have a say in this. And if this race continues to be, uh, if, it, if, it, if it continues to tighten and Bernie Sanders keeps winning some big states, the superdelegates are going to come more and more into play. And you can tell just how, um, how sensitive and raw the Sanders supporters are. When you tweet anything about delegates or anytime we have a, a story on the air, they say, don't count the superdelegates. Well, in a sense, you have to because they need to be included here, but everyone has a different estimate. But even the if CNN you don't. Uh, is about pledged delegates. She's ahead by about 239, which will be like whittled down some. But 
It's different than 2008 when there was a fight over superdelegates. The Clinton campaign tried to get superdelegates to change their mind. But in the, um, you know, we all, I'll never forget the phone call I got from Congressman John Lewis um, in, yeah. in February of 2008. He had been a superdelegate who pledged his support for Hillary Clinton. Of course, once it became clear that Barack Obama had won Georgia, he did not want to be on the wrong side of history. That's different this time, I think. Yeah. There's not the wrong side of history. And in fact, maybe the other way. I mean, she could be the first woman president. But there is, there could be a big blow up over superdelegates, their role. And in the age of Twitter and social media and other things, that did not exist. I mean, we remember those meetings that they had at the DNC here, and there were protests and people, you know, the Clinton supporters so minor. hated the Obamas so yeah. much in that respect, mm -hmm. try to get them to change the mm -hmm. rules. But so, so, so minor compared to what could happen now. That's right. So the Clinton campaign knows they have to keep their lead in place delegates otherwise uh, it's uh, some, it. some another some convention today. floor fight okay. <laughs> okay Joan I'm gonna come back to you because we talked a lot about the Supreme Court during the regular program <coughs> pardon, pardon me hay fever and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what the strategy is to ask if there is a strategy to get Merrick Garland at least heard if not confirmed because it's this we've never seen anything quite like this before where the day the president nominated someone Actually, weeks before he nominated someone, everybody said no dice. Right, right, right. In fact, of course, they have a strategy. I, Not everybody, I figured, Republicans right, say no dice. Um, yes, what you're referring to is just when just when Justice Scalia died, uh, Mitch McConnell, the Senate uh, Republican leader, was out there saying, no, we're not going to do hearings. So that happens on February 13th. On March 16th, President Obama nominates Merrick Garland cast them as a consensus choice and in fact several republicans at other points uh, in obama's tenure had called him a consensus choice had said they'd be open to him but being so close to uh the next president's tenure they want to shut it down so what the obama administration has been doing is you know slowly doing these visits trying to get lots of attention when, uh, for example, he went, uh, Judge Garland went and visited with um, yeah. Illinois Senator uh, Kirk, first Republican that he saw. They're just going to keep adding each week, trying to have a high-profile support from Republicans. They're going to try to keep the message out there, pounding away on is it about Chuck getting, Grassley. But is it about getting him confirmed, or is it just embarrassing the Republicans who are... So oh, no, no, they want to get him confirmed. Their, oh. their strategy has, you know, you're talking about maybe a strategy that would just help them politically in yeah. certain Senate races. That's part of it, but they want this man confirmed. That's, that's our priority here. They want this man confirmed. We know that uh, justices can be a president's enduring legacy. Even a man appointed at age 63 would probably serve for 20 years. And just, you know, President Obama will be out the door. They want him on the bench. I'm, I, I know they want him on the bench, but I am suspicious of the idea that they fully expect him to be on the bench. Well, okay. During the... Main part of the newscast. It is. Isn't I it? did yeah. say. I did say that I thought that he would not make it, but I'm. I'm thinking it's 50-50, Gwen. I don't think you should shut the door on the idea You're that he flip becomes. You're flopping right in front I am, of my eyes. I, I decided that it was a different telecast but we were Jones, having. And, 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 <laughs> to, to what extent do you think is part of the calculus at the White House that as this Republican nomination battle unfolds, that there could be at least some softening or change of heart? among the Republicans. Well, and yet, there can be, because what you guys are, aren't thinking about is all <laughs> the factors that could happen in the upcoming months. Right now, we have a certain set of factors. We have where we're at in the presidential uh, primary season. We have exactly where the judiciary is at. We, yeah. Everything is set. Things could change that would make my prediction change. Yeah, like having That's a Republican nominee. In the well, having a, exactly. You know. Having a Republican nominee, something else happened at the Supreme Court. Just, okay, having Hillary trust me. Clinton say that she might re renominate him if elected. That's right. That's right. We, She's there's not going to say that. I don't think she will. No, no, no. Well, no. What? Why give space. it away? Okay, okay, watch, watch this space. Yes. We'll finish. She the needs show. the mystery. Yes. yes. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> if you long for more, be sure to check out what we, the rest of what we have to offer online, including my blog this week about whether the revolution has arrived. That's at pbs.org slash Washington Week. Jeff is like, what? And we'll see you here <laughs> next time on the Washington Week Webcast Extra.